Has anyone else had enough of the full-size desktop game? Intel released their Skull Canyon Nook, a tiny gaming bare bones all the way back in 2016. It had no dedicated graphics, but it still ignited an arms race, prompting competitors like Zotac and MSI to try to pack as much horsepower as possible into the smallest packages possible. And Intel finally has a follow-up, the Hades Canyon Nook, or NUC8i7HVK, a VR and AAA game-capable PC boasting an 8th gen Core i7 quad-core CPU and AMD Radeon Vega graphics in a package about the same size as a Harry Potter novel. You know what else is novel? Origin PC. They offer beautiful custom desktops, high-performance laptops, and lifetime 24-7 technical support. They use only high-quality products like Samsung's 960 Pro M.2 SSDs, and you can check them out at the link below. Before we get to the new one, here's a Skull Canyon from 2016. The formula that Intel followed for the design of this NUC was actually great. Solid CPU, lots of I.O., including Thunderbolt 3, and it was easy to upgrade. It was basically perfect for a compact computer, except for the lack of dedicated graphics. I mean, this pretty much limited it to easy-to-run games like Overwatch and Minecraft, which is a pretty tough pill to swallow for anyone paying $650, which is a considerable premium over a desktop system, for a bare bones with no RAM or storage. But in the last two years, a lot of things have happened, including evidently hell freezing over because AMD and Intel came together at last to create this which actually, now that I think about it, is that where the Hades bit in the name came from? Anywho, this thing is pretty OP. It's $999 for the top tier bare bones kit, which is pricey, but it includes a hyper-threaded quad-core Core i7-8809G and Vega MGH graphics, or it's $799 for the step-down one that gives up overclocking support and 0.1 gigahertz of CPU turbo and drops from 24 to 20 compute units on the GPU. First thing I notice about it is it's really, really heavy for how small it is and that while it is still small, it is not nearly as compact as the old ones. So it better bring some really impressive performance to the table. All panels save for the top are completely covered in hexagonal perforations to allow as much air as possible to be fed into the dual bottom mounted fans. As for I.O., it's impressive. Starting with USB, we get a total of 7 including a Type-C and a quick charger on the front, and it can connect up to 6 displays including easy access to HDMI for a VR headset. Overall, it's got more I.O. than many desktops, including not one, but two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Cracking it open, we get a look at the internals now. Oh, check that out so you can see through it. That's where the RGB lighting comes through for the skull on the top. And then removing this additional screw right here, we can lift up this plate to get a look at our options for memory and storage. So we've got two SODIMM slots with support for up to 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM and dual full length, oops, and dual full length 80 millimeter M.2 slots with support for both AHCI and NVMe drives, as well as RAID 0 and RAID 1. So we're gonna be using uh, an Intel Optane 800P for our boot drive and then a regular NVMe SSD for our storage drive because like, YOLO, right? <laughs> anyway, while we're in here, we also get a look at the backside of the CPU and GPU. So it's got this odd, rectangular shape to it here, and that's for a reason. That's because of the way that the RX Vega MGH, 
So the H here is for high performance, connects directly to the main CPU and they're actually installed on the same substrate. So this special engineering trick, which is basically a PCI Express 8X link right between them, is what makes this system so powerful, compact, and power efficient compared to other small form factor desktops. All right, time to plug it in now. And uh, that, oh, oh, that is a beefy power brick. That power brick is actually almost the size of the old Nook. Anyway, fun fact, the eyes, the skull, and the power button are all separate RGB zones. So you can make them any color you want or turn them off if you prefer that sort of thing. But that's not the most important thing. You guys want to know how it performs. And isn't this hilarious? This is AMD software, but just like with an Intel skin on it. Like this is so bizarre. Uh, anyway, let's, let's get some games fired up and talk performance here. We compared Hades Canyon with Intel's last generation Skull Canyon, as well as a similarly priced desktop, excluding costs for storage, RAM, and operating system. And its performance is actually pretty surprising. Compared to the last gen Skull Canyon Nook, Hades Canyon completely blows it out of the water, as Intel integrated graphics just isn't even in the same ballpark as the Radeon Vega chip that the Hades Canyon uses. As for the gap between the new Nook and our 8700K desktop system, it's pretty noticeable with an average overall increase of about 35% across the spectrum of games and synthetic tests that we used. Though this isn't bad if you consider the Nux 50% lower TDP and its tiny form factor. But does buying this Nook make any sense? Well, actually, especially in light of the pricing of decent dedicated graphics cards right now, as a compact, minimal HTPC, the Hades Canyon is actually pretty awesome. Like, if you told me three years ago that this was running on this, I'd have been looking for the hidden wires, but, but this is real. And not only is the noise not a problem from like a couch distance or even from this distance, the performance is good enough to play basically any game even if it's not at absolute maximum settings. So as long as you're willing to give up future upgradability and you'll get some kind of a benefit from the size, uh, maybe you go to a lot of lands, for example, it's actually not a terrible deal for all the hardware that's included. Optima's New Force BE2 wireless Bluetooth earphones feature up to 10 hours of continuous listening battery life. They're IPX5 rated, water and weather resistant. It's crafted with polycarbonate and equipped with Kevlar reinforced cables. And the wireless design with magnetic earpieces allows for tangle free listening and portability. It comes with spin fit twin blade ear tips that are made from high quality silicon and designed to provide optimal fit and comfort. The Optima's New Force BE2 is the only model at this price range supporting AAC, which ensures maximum audio quality and iPhone connectivity, as well as other Apple products. Get them now for just 39 bucks US for a limited time at the link below. So thanks for watching guys. If you just liked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there, we'll have our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.